In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this physical Pico 8 console. Don't mind the pretty kitty. This was a birthday present for my daughter, but I think it looks pretty cool. I'll click it on. We would have some glowing. And all I have to do is turn this on and plug it into my TV through HDMI. And it boots up Pico 8 and plays a cartridge. I have this hooked up to a keyboard. And so I can play my game with the keyboard controls. I can also plug in a gamepad and that works too both for player one as well as player two. I'll just unplug these and get them out of the way here. And if I connect a keyboard, I can hit escape and type Splore, and I can play games through Splore. And so I think this is pretty cool and it wasn't that hard to make <laughs> after I scoured the internet and learned all the little tiny things that you need to learn to make this kind of thing happen. So I wanted to put together a super legit guide on how to make something like this happen. And this is the video. So let's break this down really simply. How do you make something like this? Well, the shell and the casing here is all 3D printed, but the insides here, the, the, the actual brain of this thing is built with something called a Raspberry Pi. Now, if you were like me before I started this project, I had heard of Raspberry Pi, but I didn't really know what it was. So Raspberry Pi is this. It's a tiny little computer. And there are several different kinds. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero, and it's very small. It's about the size of a stick of gum, I would say. And it has a bunch of thinky parts, two micro USB ports, mini HDMI port, a micro SD slot, and a whole bunch of other random nerdy things that I don't really know that much about. But this is powerful enough to run Pico 8. So how the heck do we do that? The first thing you're gonna need is to buy one of these. They're on Amazon, they're about 20, 30 bucks. This is called a Raspberry Pi 02W. It's the cheapest Raspberry Pi you can get. It's the second version of it and it has Wi-Fi. That's what that means. So you need one of these. You need a micro SD card. I'd recommend like 32 gigs at least. Here's the one that I'm using for this project. And what you do is you download an app that will load the Raspberry Pi operating system onto this baby. They have apps for Windows and Mac. You download it, tell it what card you wanna use what version of the operating system you want to put on it, and then it automatically does it and you take it out. And then you put it into your Raspberry Pi, and this is a computer. All you gotta do is hook it up to power through this USB, and a keyboard and mouse through this USB, and a monitor through this HDMI. So that's what's inside of this thing. If you don't believe me, well, let's just crack it open. Here's the magic. Inside of this thing, the biggest part is this USB hub. We also have some LEDs that I wired up here, which I knew nothing about how to do. And we have the HDMI and the big USB to micro USB adapter, which lets me hook up this USB hub. And then we have a USB power cable with a little switch, which I just found on Amazon because I just searched Raspberry Pi micro USB power cord, and it was the first one that came up. So yeah, other than these LEDs, that's what it is. So I'll reuse the HDMI and the power here, but I'm gonna take this and put this aside and let's sort of remake this thing. So the very first thing that you need to do is get a micro SD card and download an app called Raspberry Pi Imager. This is from the Raspberry Pi website. And what this does is it sets up the OS, the boot image on your micro SD card. So for what we're doing, we're going to pick Raspberry Pi device. I'm using the Raspberry Pi 02W operating system. Just use the normal Raspberry Pi OS. Storage, we're going to select this micro USB device, hit next. Would you like to apply OS customization settings? No, all existing data will be erased. Are you sure? Yes. Then it's gonna write the image to the SD card. It'll take a few minutes. And when it's done, you just pop the card out of your computer and then you put it into your Raspberry Pi. Here we go. Here is an earlier kind of test version of the bottom of our console. Pretty much functions the same way. It's just a different color of PLA. And you don't have to 3D print to get this kind of thing going. You could put it in a cardboard box if you want to, it doesn't really matter. But you know, it's a lot nicer if you can kind of make this. I designed this not knowing a whole lot about 3D printing or CAD or anything. Pretty much just followed YouTube tutorials on how to use a program called Onshape, which is a free CAD program. And I took some measurements of this thing so that it would fit snugly down in this little holder. 
and I didn't do much fancy. I just literally ran these cables through the back of this thing, just with a space. <laughs> okay, this one's the power. Boop. There we go. And then, yeah, just got this from Amazon. Measured that so that would fit snugly right here. Got a little converter, plugged that bad boy in, and turned on the power. And so this is a fresh flash of this card. I haven't done anything fancy to this. It's just literally stock exactly how it comes. And it's booting up the Raspberry Pi desktop. Okay, and it boots it up and it says, welcome to Raspberry Pi desktop. Press next to get started. Okay, Los Angeles time zone, English language, US keyboard, sure, next. Now we have to create a user. I'm just going to say admin. Password is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Obviously use whatever you want. Select my Wi-Fi from the list. I found sometimes this doesn't actually find the Wi-Fi here. And so for now, we can just skip it. Default browser, doesn't really matter. Next, we're gonna skip the updates for now because we're not even connected to the Wi-Fi and we'll hit launch. Now there are some guides online about how to do things like this and they use different versions of Raspberry Pi. Some of them don't have like a GUI like this, which I don't know, if you're like me, that's really intimidating. And we are gonna get into some console stuff. We're still mostly gonna be doing that, but I find things like doing updates and copying files and everything is way easier when you have a familiar interface like this. So I'm gonna go up to the upper right-hand corner and click on this little up-down button. And now, for some reason, it finds the Wi-Fi just fine. So I'll click on that and connect. Okay, so now we're connected. And on your PC or your laptop or whatever, you need to buy Pico 8 if you haven't already. And then you can download the Raspberry Pi zip for Pico 8. I'll just put that on my desktop. And this is what I would do if I were you just because it's easier on your PC or Mac. I would right click and extract all so that you have this Pico 8 folder. Take this and put it on a thumb drive. Here's my Pico 8 folder. I'll just drag it onto my thumb drive and I'll plug in my thumb drive that has the Pico 8 files on it. It's gonna ask me what I want to do. I'm gonna open it in File Manager and I'm gonna take this Pico 8 folder and just drag it onto the home folder like this. It's gonna copy the files and the one thing we need to do is go to that home folder under Pico 8 and this Pico 864 right here, right click on it, Properties, Permissions, where it says Execute, turn this into anyone. That'll actually let you run this like a program. Then we just double click on it and say execute and see if it opens. It should open and work. There we go. Now, this is running really, really slow. In fact, it's gonna give me a warning that says it's running below 30 frames per second. And that's totally okay because the way that we're gonna run this is less system intensive and it's going to run just fine. We're just making sure that Pico 8 actually opens. The other thing we're gonna do is type splore to make sure that's working. And if that loads the splore stuff, that's great. Try and run a game. It's going to, again, run insanely slow. Okay, this is running slow, but it's running. Great. Control Q to quit. That's good. That's all we need is that Pico 864 running. Okay, now we're gonna do a couple things to make this just boot into Pico 8. The first thing we're gonna do is open up terminal here and we're gonna type sudo for sudo raspi-config like this. Enter, that's gonna give you your configurations. Go into system options, go down to boot, and then just hit enter on this B1 console text. What this is gonna do is when the Raspberry Pi starts up, it's not going to load the desktop like this because we just don't need to do anything else. We're just loading Pico 8, so we're gonna load the text console. So we'll hit enter and it'll go back and think for a second. And then it'll come back here, hit tab and go over to finish and hit enter. And it's gonna ask if you want to reboot. Don't reboot yet, so no. Then we're going to modify the startup script that runs every time we get into terminal. And so the cool thing is this is going to boot right into terminal without any of this other stuff. And then it's gonna run that script, okay? So to edit the script, we say sudo nano, which is the name of the text editor. And then we're gonna say tilde slash dot bash RC, just like that, enter. This is gonna bring up bash RC, which is the startup script. 
and we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna add three lines and one of these is just a comment. And so pound sign to show this is a comment and we'll just say pico-8 stuff. The first line is gonna be clear. The next line is going to be tilde slash pico-8 slash pico no dash eight underscore 64, just like that. What this is gonna do is after it's done all of its other loading up stuff, it's going to clear the screen. Then it's going to open that file that we tested just a minute ago, Pico 864, and that's it. So we're gonna hit Control S to save and Control X to close this. Great. Now, sudo reboot now, enter. And it's gonna load that terminal and then it's gonna run Pico 8. Check that out. And look at this, no warning. And if we type Splore, goes into Splore, everything works fast like it's supposed to. When we load our game, it plays quickly and everything is just fine. So now, guess what? We have a running Pico 8 console that just boots into Pico 8. That's most of the magic. Now, if you want to load a specific cart, let's just get back into Pico 8 here. We'll make a new cart. We'll just make a cart that says boot cart, save run. Okay, that's the boot cart. Now, if you type shut down in Pico 8, that'll bring you back to your terminal here. And we can auto load that cart, but let's test this out first. Let's just say tilde slash Pico 8 slash Pico 8 underscore 64 space dash run tilde slash dot lex a lawful slash carts slash boot dot p8. Oops, we need Pico 8 slash carts boot dot p8. There we go. So that boots the cartridge. We know that works. Shut down Pico 8. And we just have to put this command into that bash RC script. So sudo nano tilde slash dot bash RC. Go down to the bottom. And so after that Pico 864, we just say space dash run space tilde slash dot lexa lawful slash Pico 8 slash carts slash boot dot P8. It's control S, control X. Let's also hit up just to make sure that that's right. Lexalawful Pico dash 8 carts boot P8. Yep, that's right. So now let's just say sudo reboot now. Now it's gonna load Pico 8 and boot the cartridge boot cartridge. That's what I'm talking about. That's awesome. Okay. I'm going to shut down. Let's also go back into our Raspberry Pi config. Let's go into system. Let's turn off this splash screen, huh? No. Okay. There's a bunch of other settings you can tweak here, play around with them, but I think that's pretty much all we need to do. Tab, finish, enter, and let's see if this uh, skips the splash screen now. Looks like it's skipping the splash screen. That's good. Giving a bunch of fancy code. Makes this look next level crazy. And it loads up Pico 8 into our boot cartridge. Oh baby, this is great. Now what's cool about this is if you get this cartridge to boot, you can save this cartridge and have it load whatever game you want. You can even load a game from Splore. And so check this out. So function underscore in it, you can say load and if you know the cart's ID, you can just say pound sign, whatever the ID is, or you can type in its name if you know the unique name like that. Save, run, and look at that. It will load it from Splore. And so you can update your Splore game and it will automatically load this on boot. Then all you have to do is edit your boot cart inside of Pico 8, which is really easy. You can even make a custom interface or way to explore this or something. It's pretty cool. But this is pretty much what I did is I just had this load my game from Splore on init 
and then I set this cart to be the cart that's ran when the system reboots. So I'll just make sure that's saved. Quit Pico 8, sudo reboot now. And now this will reboot. And when my Raspberry Pi boots up, it's going to open Pico 8 and load that cart, which is going to load the latest version of my game from Splore. This makes it really easy to update my game. I just have to update it on the Pico 8 website and this will automatically load it whenever it opens up. And so I never have to like transfer files to this thing again. Now, I know this is different than like putting in a cartridge, which I haven't totally worked out how to do yet, but I think this is a really nice kind of mix of a physical console and kind of the modern downloads games, talks to the cloud kind of thing. I think it's pretty neat. And so we have a 3D printed shell and I kind of just shoved all this stuff in there. And there's my physical Pico 8 console that I can just plug into a TV. <laughs> I think it's pretty, pretty sweet. Pretty sweet, man. Take this out, just plug in some controllers and we're on our way. Hey, if you like this video, make sure to check out my other Pico 8 stuff right there. Okay, thanks, bye.